Hi, I'm Astoma, and I'm here today to tell you the story of Elijah Denmark. The patient, Elijah Denmark, is a 65-year-old male with a history of diverticulitis. He has smoked for 40 years and lives a mostly sedentary lifestyle. Elijah takes ibuprofen daily to help him deal with his arthritis he has in his hands from being a painter. The patient is experiencing stomach pain, fever, and vomiting, which has lasted for several weeks with increasing intensity. Elijah has been treated for diverticulitis twice in the past, making this his third episode. Each episode has been worse than the last, and Elijah is discussing his next steps with his doctor. Well... Your blood work, your analysis, and physical exam confirm it. This is another diverticulitis flare-up. I've been trying to follow your advice, but it seems like I keep ending up back here. I know we discussed surgery as an option in your last flare-up, and because they seem to be persistent, I think that's the best next step. Do you feel ready for that option, or how are you feeling about taking that step? I'm open to anything that'll give me relief from this agony. I just want to make sure that this is the right course of action. After we get the results of your next CT scan, we can go ahead and get the ball rolling. Because of the extent of your inflammation in the past, I would probably recommend a colostomy. This would require that you get a stoma. Dum dum dum! That's me! This would mean your waste would need to be collected in a colostomy bag, which would be external from your body. This would be a lifestyle change for you. Do you think you're ready for that? I think so. Is the procedure permanent? Not necessarily. Oh? The qualifications for a stoma removal, once we've put it in, is that your bowels have healed properly, there's enough rectum left, you have control of your sphincter muscles still, and that you're also in general good health. So depending on how this surgery goes, we can discuss that as an option in the future. This surgery does come with risks. Like, the new junction might tear, there might be leakage into your abdominal cavity, or blood clots. But we'll be with you all along the way, and we'll have a dietitian help you to make choices to support your healing. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Denmark. How are you feeling? You look great. <laughs> Let's check out your new colon. Wow, everything looks good! When you feel ready, go ahead and head down to our dietitian's office. She'll inform you about how your diet will need to be adjusted to support your new colostomy bag. Hi Elijah. While you're at the hospital, you'll be on a clear liquid diet. As your healing progresses, we can begin to introduce softer foods with low fiber, such as bananas, rice, applesauce, as well as pasta. You should be eating small amounts of food every 2-4 to four hours on a regular schedule. Avoid foods that can cause diarrhea and gas like acidic, fried, spicy, as well as high sugar foods. It is also important to avoid foods that will obstruct your stoma for the next 6-8 to eight weeks. This includes fibrous vegetables like nuts, popcorn, seeds, dried fruits, and the skin of vegetables. Okay, I can do that. I love bananas. As a colostomy patient, you are at risk of vitamin and mineral deficiencies. We also need to monitor any side effects like nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea to ensure there aren't any underlying diseases such as inflammatory bowel disease. Additionally, monitoring your electrolytes, weight, and muscle mass will ensure that you are getting a nutritious diet. So what kind of test does that involve? You'll have two blood tests done every time you follow up with your doctor. The complete blood cell count and the complete metabolic panel. We'll measure your weight and do a hand grip strength test to make sure you are maintaining your lean muscle mass. Our biggest concern is that you don't become malnourished. We want to make sure that you are healing properly and feeling like your best self. My wife makes this amazing bean soup. She grinds up the beans and everything, so it's really easy to chew and swallow. Can I eat that? Beans are actually really high in fiber. They will create a lot of gas and bloating, which can be very uncomfortable for you. It is also best to avoid any foods that may cause odor, such as fish, broccoli, eggs, and unfortunately, beans. Maybe your wife can make a different soup for you, like maybe chicken noodle soup. Are there any foods that prevent odor? That doesn't sound fun. Parsley, yogurt, and cranberry juice are a few things that can prevent odor. Great! I love parsley! She puts parsley on the bean soup. So sorry, did you say something? Oh no, nothing. Could you print me out an example of some meals that I can eat? It all seems a little daunting. Sure, I have some right here. Great, thanks! I've got this in the bag. 